Hi, my name is Hannah. Welcome back to my channel, Savage Reads. I am excited to do my weekly wrap up. I have read some very interesting books that I can't wait to talk about, but of course, my embroidery project update. So the trees are taking me a long time, but I finished the top half of my fall leaves and now I'm starting to work on, I'm trying to do some like purple heather down here, but then I'll fill it in with grasses and some daisies. I don't know, I'm filling in the bottom half now, but this is my tree scene. You definitely can't see the trees very well because there's so many leaves, but that one will be done soon, hopefully. I had my sister out visiting, so I have been having a great time, but I did manage to read a couple really interesting books this week, so let's jump into those. So the first book that I want to talk about was a recommendation from Ray at A Giant Cup of Coffee, so I will make sure to link her channel down below, and it was The Uncommon Reader by Alan Bennett, and this book was so weird. I had no idea what I was getting into. Basically, it's what if the Queen of England took up the hobby of reading and hadn't been into it before, but decided in her later years that she was going to start reading. And these books change her and change kind of the trajectory of her life. And it was cute. It was short. It was sweet. And if you want something kind of light and fun and about the joy of reading and the importance of books, yeah, I thought that this was fine. It was cute, but it was also just weird. This book was published in 2007 and it just kind of feels like someone really loved the queen and wanted to write some sort of fan fiction about her life. I thought it was kind of delightful, but also not that deep. But if you want something kind of fluffy, it was a fun one and short. So I had a comment recommending a book called America Redux Visual Stories from Our Dynamic History by Ariel Aberg Reger. And this is a book that is taking on some of the common myths or common perceptions about the American dream and talking about some of the history behind it. So the idea of a white picket fence, where did that come from? And what is actually the reality of housing for many Americans? It's taking a lot of the common stories that are told in the United States and showing some of the reality in the background and what is an American identity and what does that mean? And this book, I did completely wrong. So apologies because my library only had this on audiobook and this book literally is called Visual Stories from Our Dynamic History. And the actual book says that it's fully illustrated with photographs, maps, documents, graphic elements, handwritten text, and it's a dazzling immersive experience. I didn't do that. So I feel really bad. The audiobook was fine. It was a lot of information that I feel like I had learned about more in depth from other books. It talked about Love Canal up by Niagara Falls and I read a whole book that talked about that. It had a lot of smaller things that I read more fleshed out so just listening to it didn't give me enough. But this sounds fantastic if I had the actual copy. So this was my fault and if I ever stumble across an actual physical copy, I will make sure to pick it up again because I did this so wrong and I do feel bad. But the stories themselves were very interesting, well written, just short and things that I feel like could have gone into more depth in different books. I read the book The Bee Sting by Paul Murray and I have no idea what to think about it. I've heard so many people talk about it and I don't know where I stand. This book is following a family falling apart. Something has gone wrong with the garage that the dad owns and it is going under. And a lot of their hopes and dreams are all being dashed. And so you watch through the different perspectives of the daughter, the son, the mom, and the dad, and watch as the family is breaking down. And I don't know where I stand on this. At first, I started reading it and was super engaged. We had the daughter and the son and their lives, and I wanted to know more. Now, the way that this was written 
was kind of interesting. It didn't use a lot of punctuation. And when I got into Imelda, the mom's sections, I got kind of lost. It was very stream of consciousness and I stopped feeling very engaged. I understand what the author was trying to do there, at least I think so. I feel like it could have been very successful, but maybe it would have worked better in an audio format where I felt like I was more stuck in her head with those thoughts going through my head because reading it just felt a little laborious and I didn't love going through that. And then once we go back to her husband and then start kind of flopping through the other perspectives, it picked up and was much more engaging. But I got stuck in that middle section and thought about quitting. And then finally, once I got through it, the rest of it, I finished it in a day, no problem. But I had that book checked out for a couple weeks, just thinking I need to finish that book. Do I need to finish that book? I want to know what happens. I want to make sure the kids are okay because I cared in the beginning, but I struggled through the middle section. So my reading experience wasn't maybe the best. And I wonder if it would be better on audiobook because I wonder if that comes across a little neater. I, I don't know. So the writing style didn't always work for me. I think this book had some really interesting elements of a very classic tragedy of knowing where things were going to end up and being unable to stop it. And you could see the characters writing their own destiny as they follow it. I also found that very frustrating and annoying. I spent a lot of the time thinking, why won't these characters just talk to each other? Why is nobody having open communication? And I understand that that is something that these characters felt like they couldn't do, but when were we gonna have those big conversations? They never would appear and it was very frustrating to feel like no one could actually acknowledge the truth of their lives. And I think that was a big theme throughout the book. But was it frustrating in the reading experience? Yes. I think there was that aspect of the characters being unable to live true to themselves, being unable to engage with their lives meaningfully and how it kind of poisoned their family. And I hated how the ending was so ambiguous. It felt less like a writing device and more like the author giving up on trying to have these meaningful conversations that needed to happen. And so I am somewhere in the middle on this because I do think there is a lot to be discussed in this. I think the writing style was very interesting and different. I think there were some really interesting themes and layers that went into this and watching the family go through felt very like classic tragedy. It just was also not my favorite reading experience. And so I don't know what to think about it. If you have read this book, please let me know what you thought. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you just appreciate it for what it was, even if you didn't love it? Just let me know because I'm really not sure where I sit on this book. And finally, I got this recommendation from Gemma at Gemma Books. So make sure to check her channel out. I will link it down below. And this was Some People Need Killing, A Memoir of Murder in My Country by Patricia Evangelista. This is following her life as a journalist in the Philippines covering the state-sanctioned killings under Duterte's rule on the war on drugs. And this is such an important subject and one that I feel like I haven't read enough books about. The only other book that I have read about this that I can think of was Patron Saints of Nothing, which was a great fictional young adult book to introduce them to this topic, but I really wanted a good nonfiction on this subject and this one did it. It is so well done, takes you through step by step and is so horrific to see the way that Duterte would talk and how people would support him through these horrible policies that led to so many people dead. And I think you can see parallels between the way that Duterte rose to power with other politicians you may have heard speaking. I think it's worth a read to not only understand what is going on in 
the Philippines but to understand what an authoritarian regime is looks like and I thought this book was just excellent couldn't put it down and was tragic and horrible so this is a subject that needs to be talked about more and I just highly recommend this book I thought the author did a great job at pulling together not only some of her own experiences but the history and the context behind what was going on and the attitudes and opinions that are still continuing today and so highly recommend this book was excellent thank you so much for the recommendation Gemma and that is what I have read the past week or so if you have any thoughts on these books please leave them in the comments down below and I will see you all on the next one thank you